Hello again and welcome again to our studies in Isaiah, week three, and our theme this week is the remnant. The idea or concept of re remnant is one of a portion that remains, a remainder of something that has wasted away, been largely destroyed or suffered catastrophic loss. In the Bible, we often see this idea applied to God's people who have apostatized and turned away from God or suffered some war or disaster. Such disaster is often an expression of God's judgment for the people's sin and unfaithfulness. So, for example, in Genesis, we'll read of a, a worldwide flood, but God preserves a faithful remnant, namely Noah and his family. Elijah, after his amazing triumph on Mount Carmel over the prophets of Baal, fled for his life and in a cave. He moaned bitterly to God saying, I am the only one left and now they want to kill even me. However, we read that God had reserved 7,000 in Israel who had not bowed down to Baal. They were a remnant. And you see that story in 1 Kings and 19. And Isaiah has a, a remnant theme throughout his amazing message. Showing Isaiah 10 and verse 20, we read, In that day the remnant of Israel, the survivors of Jacob, will truly Rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 21, that same chapter says, A remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. We also see similar concepts in terms such as holy seed, which is in chapter 6 and verse 13. Um, there's terms like a stump of Jesse. 11, 1. Sometimes we see the word root or branch. And in Isaiah 28, you'll read of a stone laid in Zion, which again we see in the New Testament. And, and all these concepts, all these terms speak of a, a remnant, something that will remain and return. Perhaps the most interesting example is in Isaiah 7. Um, Isaiah has a son named Shear Jashub, which means a remnant that shall repent. God tells Isaiah to go and meet King Ahaz, who we met in week one. Meet King Ahaz with your son, uh, a remnant shall repent and give him a message. And that message is to trust in God and not Assyria. And his son is part of the message to repent, to return, to be God's remnant. Isaiah's message, as we saw last week, is one of judgment on the people who disobeyed God's commands, offended God's holiness. That judgment would take the form of war, invasion, oppression, and ultimately exile and slavery. But alongside this message of judgment, alongside Isaiah's message of judgment, is this theme of remnants who would be preserved, a remnant that would be preserved. And in future, that remnant would return to Judah from exile. God in Isaiah promises that although the nation is under judgment, he will not totally destroy them and wipe them out. Previously, we mentioned that the Assyrian Empire is now ancient history. It's artefacts ruined cities in the desert covered in sand but God's remnant God's people the remnant Isaiah talks of will be freed from slavery will return from exile will flourish will be fruitful and live in a fruitful land all those promises we find in Isaiah they will live forever and as we will see that that remnant now includes that remnant in fact now is the church of Jesus Christ the remnants are a remnant of covenants or a remnant of promise. If we look in the Old Testament, we see um, several covenants and that God would preserve a remnant is rooted in his covenantal promise. Covenants, I will say, is foundational to the thrust of God's revelation in Scripture. God called Abraham and entered into covenant with him. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of nations, that his descendants would be as numerous as the grains of sand on the shore, that through him, all nations on earth will be blessed. God took his servant Moses and God promised Abraham, Israel through Moses, you will be my people and I will be your God. With David, God entered into covenant. God's covenant was his David. with David was that David's kingdom, David's rule would be forever. And God's covenant, it, therefore, is the expression of his redemptive purpose for Israel. And through Israel, his redemptive purpose for the whole world. And what we see um, again and again in Isaiah reminders of God's redemptive 
covenant. So in 41, 8, 9, um, he says, You, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham. My friend, what a great um, statement to say, Abraham, my friend, I have chosen you and have not rejected you. Look unto Abraham, your father, Isaiah says in chapter um, 51, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone and I blessed him and increased him. We see a reminder of the Mosaic promise in 43.16, where it says, this is what the Lord says, he who made us a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, which is, of course, is a reference to the mighty deliverance of, of Israel from Egypt. Perhaps foremost, we see allusions to God's covenant with Israel's great King David. So in 9.6, as we saw in previous weeks, um, the child, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, would reign and rule on David's throne forever. In 11 and verse 1, we, we read a shoot from the stump of Jesse will produce a branch that will bear fruit. 37 and 35, I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my David, my servant David's sake. So God is reminding us through Isaiah of his promise and of his covenant. So although we saw that the people of Isaiah's day have broken covenant, have broken their promise as part of the covenant in rebellion, corruption and idolatry. God, nevertheless, will keep his promise. God vests his very being into his promise, into his covenant and his sovereignty that we looked at in week one is vested, is invested in his covenant, his holiness that we looked at last week is vested and invested in his promise and in his covenant. And this is a, a huge, huge statement that the king of all the universe should be committed and vest his, his, his sovereignty into a promise to his people, to you and me, to fallible human beings, that he should vest all his holiness into his promise to his people. Amazing, amazing thoughts. But in the New Testament, we, we, it, it's true, it's real, because in the New Testament we see the full extent of God's commitment to his promise, to his people, to his covenant. Jesus, as he approaches his crucifixion at the Last Supper, says to his disciples, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Uh, and Luke 22, and in Romans, the Apostle Paul, Paul gives us these words, if God is for us, who can be against us? Listen to this, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. The eternal God, in the person of the Son, and as the, uh, the, the Nicene Creed puts it, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, Jesus, God, gives his very life. It's a new covenant, but it's part of God's redemptive plan. It's a new covenant, but it grows out of the old covenant. It's a new covenant, and it's a greater covenant, which according to Hebrews renders the old covenant obsolete. Paul, of course, is chosen by God to be the apostle to the Gentiles, to tell people who are not ethnic Jews that they too are included in the covenant, that they are, that we are, that you and I are um, Abraham's seed, children of Abraham, not of human descent, but through faith. We are a remnant. Last week in discussion, you might have asked, if Isaiah is for us today or just for ancient Israel, Jesus, Paul, the whole of the New Testament confirms that we are part of God's redemptive covenant, included in the promise, and therefore we are Isaiah's people. The remnant is chosen. Very briefly, we can see in Isaiah that Israel's remnant are God's chosen people. But now, listen, Jacob, my servant, he says in 44.1, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says, he who made you, who formed you in the womb, who will and who will help you. You know, God knows his people, even in the womb, that's saying. And a similar thought is expressed in the Psalms and in the New Testament. What is true of Israel is true of the people of the New Covenant. Ephesians 1, Paul has these fabulous words. Paul says, we are chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. We're predestined for adoption to sonship, marked with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guarantee, guarantee in our inheritance. Fantastic it's a study in its 
own right and probably several studies in its own right but we just don't have the time right now so we're going to move on to a remnant who are preserved the remnant is preserved and protected we look to isaiah's confrontation with ahaz in week uh, earlier in this talk and the sign of his son shia jashub a remnant shall repent when we read a little further in the same passage the same encounter ahaz has rejected the word of god and isaiah brings a further word to, to ahaz and he says god himself will give you a sign the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. We see in 12 2, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. We've heard in recent Sunday mornings from Isaiah 40, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. In Isaiah 41, you will read, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. These are fantastic. And some of the most beloved promises of God's intent to preserve his people. <laughs> Maybe you've got one hung above your door on a on a plaque um, and, and in the new testament we under, we also understand that god keeps us matthew's gospel tells us that isaiah's sign of emmanuel is realized in the birth of jesus jesus himself is emmanuel jesus is god with us we noted paul in romans saying if god is for us who can be against us but then he goes on to say for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus himself in John chapter 10 says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out from my hand. As Christians, our life, our hope, our salvation is totally secure in God's promise. Nothing can pluck us from his hand. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's important though for us to note that Isaiah's prophecy of judgment falls also on the remnant. The promise is not that a remnant will be exempted from oppression and exile, will avoid it, but that it will be preserved in exile on that one day. It will return that in the suffering and in the difficulties Emmanuel God is with them God is with us we live in a fallen world in a society that largely rejects God despite in the past receiving God's favor a world that is marred by sin and corruption and is under judgment a world where we see war and violence poverty hunger injustice natural disasters sickness and death, which is a penalty for sin and ultimately the fate for us all. We all live in this world and in different ways experience its woes. We are in exile, we are under judgment, but God, I want to tell you friends today, that he preserves his remnant. We live in God's promises found in Isaiah and in scripture as a whole. God is with us, Emmanuel, God is with us, God will strengthen us, God will uphold us with his righteous right hand. The waters will not sweep over us, the fire will not set us ablaze. God calls us to put our hope, our trust in him. Psalm 50, we looked at a couple of weeks ago, call on me in the day of trouble. Peter says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And you know, this I think can be difficult because sometimes it can seem that God hears us and answers our prayer great sometimes it seems that he doesn't that he's forgotten us he's abandoned us but you know god is promised that he is with us emmanuel god is with us god wants us to pray he wants us to put our faith in him in all circumstances to lift our eyes higher and look beyond our situation whether that be good or bad and to trust in his promise in daniel 3 
Hebrew officials in the court of King Nebuchadnezzar. It, this is while after they had gone into exile. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego threatened with being thrown into the furnace or refusing to bow before a golden image um, that was, would have been against their, their um, promise to God, their covenant with God. They refused to bow before this golden image. They were part of the remnant said this if we are thrown into the fire we are thrown into the blazing furnace the god we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand but even if he does not we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up so they were trusting in god believing that he would deliver them from the, the danger, but saying, even if he does not, we will not bow. We will still serve. We will still put our confidence and our hope in our God. God asks us to trust in him, not our own resources. Outcomes, they're for God to decide. Ours is to put our confidence in him. And it's that prayer, that calling out to God that we are blessed and we are growing in God and in Christ and in his, his knowledge. Jesus is a remnant, I believe. Isaiah's concept, concept of remnant is immediately related to the concept of historical Israel and their exile. In Ezra and Nehemiah, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, you can read how at the command of Cyrus, king of Persia, about 50,000 returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and restore the city. We have discussed how the idea of remnant is rooted in God's covenantal promise. And we reference God's covenant with David in Isaiah 11, 1. It says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Jesse, of course, was the father of David. And the promised descendant who would establish David's throne forever is Jesus. The stump of Jesse, therefore, is remnant thinking, remnant promise, remnant prophecy. Um, God in judgment is taking an axe to the tree so to speak, but a remnant remains because of God's covenantal love. But we are as well as, but we see uh, in, in the picture of a root, we see, we see reference to Jesus, who is the root of David. And this remnant will remain. We've seen that, we, we see that from the root, a branch will bear fruit. And in the picture of a root, we see reference to Jesus, who is the root of David. He is a pre-existent, eternal son of God who exists before David. In a picture of branch or within root and branch, in a picture of branch, we see also see reference to Jesus, David's son, who will be born 700 years later in Bethlehem, David's town, born of David's line to Joseph and Mary. This is the incarnate son of God. So we have um, Jesus who is before David and is after David. David, who is the eternal Son of God, who fulfills God's promises. The apostolic writers of the New Testament, in a sense, see Jesus as a remnant. He's rejected by the people, deserted by his closest friend. And then on the cross, God's chosen Son cries that terrible cry of dereliction. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you exiled me? Jesus becomes the exiled one, the one who suffers judgment of God for the sin of humanity but he also is a remnant and God's promise is that the remnant will return on the third day God raises Jesus from the dead and a few weeks later he ascends to heaven and returns to his father but that's not the end because Paul in his letters tells the believers that they are that we are in Christ Jesus we are joined to him we are united with him we are chosen in him we are including him in him that we are buried with him in baptism raised with him into new life we are his body we are joint hairs we are his church for example in galatians 5 26 27 paul says so in christ jesus you are all children of god through faith for all of you who are baptized into christ have clothed yourself with christ so we've been baptized into christ we have clothed ourselves with christ if you belong to christ we belong to christ then you are abraham's seed heirs according to the promise jesus is ultimately the remnant god's faithful servant who god preserves who returns from the exile of death we are united to christ 
and therefore included in him and with him as a remnant by virtue of that unity we can reckon on and have confidence in God's promises in Isaiah because they are God's promises in his son they are fulfilled in him they are secured by him they are given to him how could God not honor his promises and we are in Christ we are his church we are included in the covenant we are chosen in Christ we are uh, we inherit his kingdom we are the remnants of God Isaiah people next week we're going to look at some um, servants bye <laughs>